So, Joseph, today we've had uh, long-awaited news, I think, on uh, Las Pambas, um, sale of this major copper asset in Peru. Glencore shares don't move. What happened? Yeah, it's interesting that Glencore's shares you know, barely rose you know, less than 1%, but that's partly because people have been expecting something on Las Bambas for a while. Like Glencore originally agreed to sell the asset um, as a condition of Chinese approval of its merger with Extrata. Uh, however, it also included a debate on whether Glencore should just keep the asset and sell something else to placate the Chinese, uh, because Las Bambas is one of the world's largest copper mines in development. It's very high quality, very high grade copper, and it would produce for years and years. And so if, you, if you're a miner like Glencore, you want to show sort of stable cash flow mm. to your investors, you could have kept it. But for now, they have $6 billion in cash uh, from the Chinese. And this, despite the share price move, will be a turning point for Glencore's finances. Fine. And so that begs the question, what are they going to do with all this cash? Uh, I think the priority is probably making sure Glencore's triple B credit rating is shored up. I mean, Glencore has fairly high debt of about $35 billion once you net off sort of trading inventories, uh, which it has. Um, so spending, I don't know, like a third of the last Bambas cash on reducing that debt would be a good idea to start off with. And the company said only once they've done that will they look at returning cash to shareholders, which is, you know, like a theme du jour in mining at the moment. Mm. Uh, however, they haven't set a specific target there. And if they do, it may not be until next year. But if you hold Glencore shares, I think you'll probably be fine with that because unlike any other mining major, Glencore does deals to grow. I mean, like even today, you know, it, it bought a oil company which operates in Chad in Africa. Right, you know, it, it looks for like kind of long-term underpriced assets, and so I think that's where you know some of the cash may be deployed. And on the other side of the world, uh, Min Metals shares went up uh, six, six and a half percent mm. um, briefly. What, what, what's going on there? They, they obviously took a much more positive view. Of yeah, it's interesting. You know, Min Metals, it's a state-backed metals trader. Um, technically, it's listed subsidiary in Hong Kong was part of the consortium which has bought Las Bambas called MMG. Um, and I think the move in the min-metal share price compared to Glencore re reflects two things. Number one, um, Las Bambas, as we said, is a good copper asset. Uh, and that makes MMG therefore, you know, shoot into like, the big leagues of copper production fairly quickly. I mean, it would be like a top 15 uh, producer alone because of you know, Las Bambas, which gives you a sense of the scale of the asset. And secondly, Minimetal Min Min is state-owned. It could have acquired the asset itself and just, you know, shoved it into you know, its unlisted um, structure. Uh, however, this time they chose a, a listed entity, MMG, to take control of the asset, which means it will be slightly more transparent what they actually do with that spam bass, which is important considering it will need intensive capital spending to actually complete. So this is also a moment for Chinese state-owned enterprises in general. Very interesting, Joseph. Thanks very much.